A pleasant good morning to everyone. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I welcome you warmly to the house of God here at Evangelistic Faith Church. And I pray God's blessings upon you as you worship with us today. Let's all stand and we are going to begin this morning by singing the chorus. Thou art worthy, thou art worthy, thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, glory and honor, glory and honor and power. It is my pleasure this morning to welcome each and every one of you to the house of God, where we can gather to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. You know, over the past week, there were some earthquakes in places that we didn't think that earthquakes could be. In New York and where else? In Taiwan, we never heard of earthquakes there for years. But the word of God is being fulfilled. And so I want to encourage all of us present, if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, Today is a good day to get your heart right with God. We're going to stand and read our scripture for today found in the book of Psalm 139. Psalm 139. We'll read together. O oh Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down-sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thoughts afar off. Thou compassest my path and my lying down, and art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O oh Lord, thou knowest it altogether. Thou hast beset me behind and before, and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain unto it. Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. For thou hast possessed my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. Surely thou wilt slay the wicked, O God. Depart from me, therefore, ye bloody men. For they speak against thee wickedly, and thine enemies take thy name in vain. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? And am not I grieved with those that rise up against thee? I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them mine enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. 
try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. May the Lord add blessings to the reading of his word. Let us bow our heads for prayer. Father, we thank you today for your word. Your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. I pray even now, Father, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts will be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. May your word fulfill the purpose for which it has been sent. And Lord, may you alone get all the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Before you take your seat, tell three people, God knows you. Then you can have your seat. This morning, I begin a series on the theme, Fulfilling My Purpose. Fulfilling My Purpose. And our topic for today is, God Knows You. God Knows You. Since I started forth. The kingdom since my life he controls. Since I gave my heart to Jesus, the longer I serve him, the sweeter. He grows. The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. The more that I love him, more love he bestows. Each day is like heaven, my heart overflows. The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. And we need he is supplying plan just grace be every day my way gets brighter the longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. Oh, the longer I serve him, the sweeter he goes. The more that I love him, more love he bestows. Each day is like heaven, my heart overflows. The long I serve him, the sweeter he grows. Yes, the longer I serve him, the sweeter 
he grows. The more that I love him, the more love he bestows. Each day is like heaven, my heart overflows. The longer I serve him, the longer I serve him, the longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. Hallelujah. The longer I serve the Lord, the sweeter he grows. Tell your neighbor, God knows you. I don't want you to forget that. If you forget everything that he said or done here today, I want you to remember this one thing. God knows you. Rick Warren, in his book, The Purpose Driven Church, states, You were made by God and for God. And until you understand that, life will never make sense. You were made by God and for God. And until you understand that, life will never make sense. Tell your neighbor you're not an accident. Tell your neighbor you're not a mistake. Tell them one more time, you are not an accident. And you are not a mistake. Your parents may not have planned you. But God did. You are alive today because God created you. And he has a plan and a purpose for your life. Psalm 57 and 2 says, I cry out to God most high, to God who performs or fulfills his purpose for my life. Psalms 138 and verse 8 says, the Lord will perfect or fulfill all of his promises and purposes in a man's life. Philippians 1 and 6 says, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it or perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. What is the meaning of the word purpose? Purpose means the reason for which something is done or created or for which Something exists. Jeremiah 29 and 11 tells us. God said, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans, good plans. To prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Tell your neighbor, God has good things in store for you. All you have to do, tell them all you have to do is serve him. Amen. Isaiah 49 and verse 16 in the New Living Translation says, See, I have written your name on the palms of my hand. Thy wars are continually before me. Maybe our younger generation don't know this, but the older ones would recall that when you wanted to remember something, you would write it on the palm of your hand. I want us to understand that God knows you so well that he has engraved your name on the palms of his hands. Tell your neighbor God knows you. I am not forgotten. 
I am not forgotten. I am not forgotten. God knows my name. I am not forgotten. I am not forgotten. I am not forgotten. God knows my name. He knows my name. Jeremiah 1 and verse 5 says, before I formed you, before God formed us in the belly, in your mother's womb, before you were born, God says, I knew you, I sanctified you, and I ordained you a prophet to the nations. This is what God was saying to Jeremiah. Even in his mother's womb, God knew him. Imagine that. Tell your neighbor, God knows you. He really knows us. Even in the womb, when your parents didn't know what sex you would be, God knew you. He knows my name. He knows my every thought. He sees each tear that falls and hears me when I call. He knows my name. He knows my every thought. He sees each tear that falls and hears me when I call. How many of you are glad to know that God knows your name? He knows your thoughts. He sees the tears that fall when nobody else sees and nobody else knows. And he hears you when you call. Proverbs 16 and verse 4 says, The Lord has made everything for its purpose, even the wicked, for the day of evil. Even the wicked people, God has a purpose for them. Isaiah 55 and 9. Sometimes God does not reveal everything to us. Because, tell your neighbor, you can't handle it. Hear what Isaiah 55 and 9 says. For as the heavens are higher than the earth. So are my ways, that is God's ways, higher than your ways. And my thoughts, God's thoughts, than your thoughts. The way God thinks is higher, much higher than the way we think. And so I want us to know five things today. And then I'll be through. Five things. Number one, you were created by God out of love. For the purpose of sharing love. You were created by God out of love. For the purpose of sharing love. When God created us in our parents' womb, he did it out of love. It's because he loved us why he created us. And he expects us to share that love. We were created by God to love God. Our main purpose in life is not to make money. It's not to eat and drink and have a good time. As important as those things may be. It is not to build big houses and drive fancy cars. It is not to be wealthy or be famous. Our purpose in life is firstly to serve God. So if you are not serving God, you are not fulfilling your purpose. I want us to consider today the fact that we are still alive. Because God has a purpose for us. Many of us, anybody has ever been in an accident? Just wave your hand at me. All right, put your hands down and you're still here. 
Many persons were in accidents, but they didn't survive. But God has you here for a purpose. If you can see, wave your hands at me. If you can hear, wave your hands. If you can walk, wave your hands. If you can wave your hand, wave your hand. Do you know the multitudes of people today who cannot wave their hands? God gave you this ability for a purpose. To lift up your hands and give him praise and glory and honor. So you were created by God out of love for the purpose of sharing love. We are supposed to love one another. Sometimes loving one another can be very challenging. But tell your neighbor, we have to love one another. We have to love one another. Because God loved us. So firstly, we were created by God out of love for the purpose of sharing love. Secondly, you were created by God to do good work. So that you might experience God's goodness and reflect his image. Let me say that again. You were created by God to do good works. So that you might experience God's goodness and reflect his image. The word of God tells us in the book of Genesis that we were made in the image and in the likeness of God. So if we were made in God's image and in God's likeness, we are God's representatives on the earth. Tell your neighbor, represent God well. Represent God well. We were created to do good works so that we might experience God's goodness. How many of us have experienced God's goodness? Wave at me this morning. All of us have experienced God's goodness. It is God's goodness why we are still here today. God is indeed good to us. And we are to reflect his image. Thirdly, you were created by God with passion. You were created by God with passion. All of us have passion. What is passion? Passion is a strong, barely controllable emotion. Enthusiasm. A desire for something. All of us are passionate about something. Very often, our passion helps us to figure out what God has caused us to do. It is believed that at the intersection of our gifts, talents, skills, and abilities, and our passion, at that intersection, is where we find God's purpose for our lives. Let us take a moment to think about the times in your life that you were most proud. Think for a moment. When was it? Whether you were at work or it is something that was done in your personal life, but you were proud. You felt good. Think of the things that make you feel good. Those are the things that you are passionate about. Those things that you will do, even if you don't get paid for them. Anybody have anything like that in their life? Everybody should have something like that. You do it because you enjoy doing it. I enjoy talking about the Lord. Apart from talking the about the Lord, I don't talk much. But when I'm talking about the Lord, I can go on and on and on and on because I love him. I love him with all of my heart. So those things that you are passionate about help you to determine God's purpose for your life. And everybody is not passionate 
about the same thing. Tell your neighbor, that's okay. It's okay if you're not passionate about the things that I'm passionate about. Because God made us different. Fourthly, you were created by God with gifts to serve others. You were created by God with gifts to serve others. Every single one of us here this morning has at least one gift. Some of us are fully loaded. Some of us, there is hardly something that we can do. We can talk. We can cook. We can wash. We can drive. Do you know how many people can drive? All the drivers wave at me. Driving is a skill. You know how I know that? I know that driving is a skill. And the members who know me laugh. You know why? They know my story. I was the last person in my family to get a driver's license. And I went for my driver's license how many times? You hear and they sing it out. Seven times. I went seven times before I got my driver's license. And when I got my driver's license, I was so frustrated that I sat down for a whole year or more and drove nothing. But today, I can still drive because I have this skill. God has created us with gifts. And our gifts are to serve others. Our gifts are not to show off. And say, look at me. You don't know what I can do. You don't know what I have. No, brothers and sisters, no. That is not the purpose why God deposited that gift in you. God deposited that gift or those gifts in you to help others. When you can do something and you see a brother, a sister, even a stranger in need of help. Don't wait to be asked. Jump in and help. That's why we were created to serve others. And the sooner we understand and realize that, the better it will be for all of us. We were created by God with gifts to serve others. All of us were made to serve. Some people like to say, man, you're servant. Do you know what I discovered in the Bible when I was reading? At the end of this life, when God starts dishing out rewards, he will not say, well done, good and faithful pastor. He will not say, well done, good and faithful song leader. He will say good and well done good and faithful treasurer or secretary or Sunday school teacher or bus driver or usher he will not say well done good and faithful giver one word will be said for every one of us if we are faithful well done good and faithful servant. Tell your neighbor you're here to serve. You're here to serve. And serving brings purpose into our lives. We serve in our homes. We serve in our community. We serve in our society at large. When we look back at our lives, and those meaningful moments, personally or professionally. Who were you helping? Ask yourself the question. You were placed here on this earth to help somebody or some group of people. 
for almost 34 years of my life, I taught. And for 30 of those 34 years, I chose to serve and teach those children who were slower than the others. For 30 years, that's half of my life, I served these children. Some of them were rude. Some of them were very out of order. Some of the parents didn't cooperate. But my duty was to serve and serve I did. I stopped teaching for almost nine years now. And I could hardly go down the road and somebody don't say, Miss Eiliger, teacher, teacher, teacher. You know why? I served. And I served well. I want to challenge all of us, no matter what occupation you have, no matter what skills you have, whatever you're going to do, do it well. Do it not for the people, but do it as unto God. And when you decide to serve as unto God, even if they do not commend you, or recognize you, or honor you, you still serve. Because that is your purpose. Even if you don't get paid the amount of wages you should be paid, you still do because you are doing a service as unto the Lord. Brothers and sisters, we are called to serve. And it is in serving that we fulfill our purpose. Many of you would have heard the story about Joseph in the book of Genesis. Joseph, he served at home. He helped with his father's sheep. And he was an obedient young man. And because of his love, his father's love for him, he gave him a coat of many colors. I want you to understand, brothers and sisters, when you start to serve with excellence, people are going to become jealous of you. <laughs> Has nothing to do with you. You're not in any competition with anybody. You're just doing your duty. You're just performing your service. And you don't have to say, name me. When you go and so t- tell somebody about me, you don't have to because your name will go before you. Your name will make room for you when you serve and you serve with excellence. Joseph was serving his father's sheep with excellence and he gave him a coat of many colors and his brothers became envious and jealous of him and so they sold him. Joseph went down to Egypt and he served Potiphar. Joseph was thrown into prison for something he didn't do. But when he got even in prison, he was still serving. Hey, brothers and sisters, I want you to understand that when God puts something inside of you, even when you say you're not going to do it, you find yourself just doing it. Because that is your purpose. That is why you were created. And you can't help yourself. You just have to do what you were called and you were purposed to do. Joseph served. Even in prison. Joseph was put in charge of the prison. Imagine when you're a leader, it doesn't matter where you are, you're a leader. Sometimes people think you like to be in things and you just want to show up. No, darling. When you're a leader, you just lead. You just lead. If you think you're a leader and you're walking and nobody following you, you're just taking a walk. For you to be a leader, you must have followers. My brothers and sisters, God has called us to serve. In our homes, we serve our family. In our community, we serve our neighbors and those around us. And in the wider society, we serve. Fifthly, You were created by God to make an impact. You were created by God to make an impact. The word impact means having a strong effect on someone or something. It means to have influence 
in a situation or a person. You were created by God to make an impact. Most of us, if not all of us, have been to funerals, right? There are some funerals that I attend, just a handful of people. Anybody ever been to those kind of funerals? And there are some other funerals that when you plan to go, you got to leave home early. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. There are some people who have made such an impact in our lives, in our homes, in our society, that even when they die, you can't decide to stay home. You have to go and show your face. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Because they have impacted your life so much. They have affected or infected your life. They have influenced your life. And God has made every one of us to make an impact. Make an impact in some situation. Make an impact in somebody's life. You are here because God wants you to impact somebody's life. When you die, people are supposed to miss you. Hey! I said, when you die, people are supposed to miss you. When you die, people are supposed to be talking about you long after you're dead. Do you know why that happens? Because of the impact that you would have made. I thank God for my parents. I, the older I get, the more I recognize what great parents I had. The things that they taught me. Because of their impact in my life, I am who I am today. And I thank God for them. They have made a positive impact in my life. I tell people, I'm not preaching the word of God because of my parents and because of what they did for me so much, but because I have a relationship with Jesus myself. Because you and I know that many people who grew up in the church, they went when their parents were there. But when the parents gone, they gone too. Well, these days, they're not even waiting for the parents to go. As soon as they figure that they could put on their own clothes, they decide they're not going to church anymore. When they reach high school and college and university, and they start to work for their own money. They say, mm -mm, church is not for me. But let me tell you, David said, I was, I was young. And now I'm old. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Now I see he's begging bread. I want to say something to your parents. It doesn't matter what your children think. And how they feel. If they live in your house. You're in charge of them. My parents used to say. As long as you honor my vine and my fig tree. You're going to do what I say. How many doors my father used to say he have. He used to say how many doors in the house. And just in case you can't reach a door. There are this amount of windows. But as long as you're in here, it was a law, an unwritten law. You had to go to church on Sunday school. Nobody had to tell you. But these days, we are loving our children to stay home. And we say, they say they don't want to come. Excuse me? And what do we expect to happen to the next generation? Many of the children don't know anything about the Bible. Let me tell you, tell your neighbor, the Bible is a good book. If you want wisdom, if you want knowledge, 
If you want understanding, any subject you want to know about, read the Bible. It is right there. Tell your neighbor, it's a good book. Read it, read it, read the book, read the book. Read it. And when you read the word of God, the word of God will help you to make a positive impact in the lives of the people around you. Tell your neighbor, God knows you. How do people benefit from what you do? How do people benefit from what you do? Ask yourself the question. How do people benefit from the work that you do? How do you improve other people's lives? Listen, brothers and sisters, nobody is supposed to come around you and live the same. You know what I say? Nobody is supposed to come around you as a child of God with purpose and live the same. They're supposed to live better. They're supposed to live better. They are supposed to live better. When we put our trust in God, God helps us to impact the lives of others. God made you for a reason and your life has profound meaning. Some people, parents tell them, you are good for nothing like so and so and you will not become anything. Don't believe them. It doesn't matter how many times they tell you, so don't believe them. You were made for a purpose. You are created for a reason. It doesn't matter how you came forth. God kept you alive. How many children die in childbirth? How many children have been aborted? But God saw to it that you made it to where you are today. You are here for a purpose. Tell your neighbor you have purpose. You have purpose. You are here for a reason. You are here for a reason. When we put our trust in God and we spend time in his word, he reveals the meaning and the purpose for our lives. We have to spend time with God. We have to spend time in his word. And then and only then, we will really understand why God created us. Tell your neighbor one more time, God knows you. You are here for a purpose. Ask God to help you to find and fulfill that purpose. I close today with a poem written by Russell Kelfer. It says, you are who you are for a reason. You are who you are for a reason. You're part of an intricate plan. You're a precious and perfect, unique design. Let me say that again. You're a precious and perfect, unique design. I'm going to say it again. You are a precious and perfect, unique design. God, you are called God's special woman or God's special man, God's special son or God's special daughter. Nobody is just like you. You are unique. You look like you look for a reason. Our God made no mistake. He knit you together within the womb. You are just what he wanted to make. Some are fat, some are thin, some are tall, some are short, some are dark, some are fair, some are a peculiar mix. But you are exactly who God wanted you to be. The parents you have were the ones he chose. And no matter how you may feel, they were custom made, custom designed. 
with God's plan in mind. And they bear the master's seal. Some people would want to change their parents, but no. They were custom designed just for you. So, not no, that trauma you faced was not easy. And God wept that you hurt so. But it was allowed to shape your heart so that into his likeness you'll grow. You are who you are for a reason. You've been formed by the master's rod. You are who you are, my beloved, because there is a God. Stand with me as we sing from the dust of the earth. God created man. His breath made man a living soul. And God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And that's the reason why I love him so. And today as we sing, I want you to reflect upon your life. You are who you are for a reason. You have a purpose. And if you don't know what that purpose is, I want to pray with you that God will help you to find and fulfill that purpose. Amen. From the dust of the earth, God created man. His breath made man a living soul. For God so loved this world. That he gave his only son. And that is why I love him so. I was made in his likeness, created in his image for us born to serve the I can't deny him I'll always walk beside him was born to serve my hands show me those hands what were they made for my hands were made to help my neighbor my eyes were made to read God's word. What were your feet paid for? My feet. To walk in his footsteps. Is the temple of the Lord. For I was made in his likeness, created in his image. For I was born to serve the Lord. I can. And I am alone with walk beside him. 
firstborn to serve. We're going to sing the chorus again. I was made in his likeness. I was made in his likeness. Created in his image. Born, was born to serve the Lord. Oh, I cannot deny him. I'm always. Walk beside him. Oh, I was born to serve the Lord. Just play it softly. You have heard the word this morning. You know, because I have said it and you have said it to your neighbor a couple of times, that God knows you. He knows your name. And he created you for one purpose. And that one purpose is to serve him. The second purpose is for you to serve others. If you haven't committed your life to the Lord as yet, to serve him, I want to pray with you this morning. Can you just raise your hand and say, I know I'm, I was created to serve the Lord. I, I'm not fulfilling my purpose right now. But I want to do so. Could you just raise your hand if that's you? I see those hands. Is there another? You want to fulfill your purpose. Yes. You don't have to be big or small. Whatever age you are, you were created by God to serve him. Anybody else? One more hand. Yes, I see that hand. Is there another? We are going to sing the chorus one more time and then we are going to pray. During that time as we are singing, if you want to just slip your hand up, we'll remember you in our prayer. I was made in his likeness, created in his image. Oh, I was born to serve the Lord. Oh, yeah, I can't deny him. My Lord, let's walk beside him. Oh, was born to serve the Lord. For I was born. Born. Was born to serve the Lord. I want you to stretch your hand across the aisle, touch the hand, hold the hand of the person next to you, and we're going to pray. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Father God, we thank you, we praise you, we honor you, we magnify you, we exalt you for who you are. You are God from beginning to the end. You do not change. You are yesterday, today, and forever. You created us in your image and in your likeness for your purpose. To do your will. Father as we stand today. And as we hold the hand of the person next to us. We recognize that you know us. You knew us even before we were conceived. You allowed us to go to full term. And to come forth. And bring us to this moment in time. God you have protected us. You have provided for us. You have been good to us. And we say thank you, Lord. Lord, you have put inside of every one of us gifts, talents, skills, 
abilities for your purpose to bring glory and honor to you and to serve our fellow men. Lord, we thank you for depositing these gifts within us. Some have more, some have less, but God, you have deposited in each of us. For those, oh God, who do not know the purpose for which they have been designed and created, by the power of your Holy Spirit, reveal it to them today. And help us, Lord, help us all, starting today. To strive to fulfill the purpose, the reason for which we have been created. Help our lives, Lord God, to be lives of service. Help our lives, Lord God, to be lives that are impactful. Help our lives, Lord God, to be lives that are caring and sharing and loving. Help our lives, Lord God to be lives that will show forth your glory and your praise. Forgive us, Lord, for the times when we would have done things we shouldn't have. Please cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And Lord, set us on the path that you want us to go. And grant us the grace, the wisdom, the knowledge, the patience, the understanding that we need. And Lord, put Brothers and sisters and co-workers and family members surrounding us to help us to stay on that right path so that we can fulfill our purpose in Jesus' name. If you believe it, you say, Amen.